The more I watch Purdue, the more I think we can beat them. Yes, yes, sir. Let's go shock the world. Let's go do this. Yes, sir. That was FDU's head coach Tobin Anderson in the postgame locker room after their first four win on Wednesday. That is something that Purdue told us. Oh, yes, they heard. They're aware of it. And an interesting backdrop to this one as you see the starting lineups. And for more on this matchup, we send it over to Jamie Erdahl. Well, Tobin Anderson told us that he had that moment in the locker room at the first four because he's not used to having cameras all over his locker room when he wins the NCAA tournament. This is his first D1 head coaching job, his first time coaching in the NCAA tournament. He looks like he belongs. His body language belongs. But this is a long time coming for this coach. He's coached a lot of places, most recently D2, St. Thomas Aquinas, got them to the NCAA NCAA tournament last year they lost the team got together a year ago recommitted they wanted to win a championship but then FDU called Anderson has lost out on D1 jobs in his career so he knew he could not let this one go away he went to his team and asked them I know you supported me but I got to go take this job two players came with him and Demetra Roberts and Grant Singleton that shows you the kind of commitment he had to them but they followed him to FDU well, when I heard what he said in the locker room that day, the first thing I said was, he doesn't realize this is not D2 anymore. These guys are going to hear about it. He, and they did. He told us he regrets it, and he told his assistants that the next time he gets going like that to tackle him. <laughs> Purdue won the opening tip right away. They go inside to Zach Eady, who's well short. He was looking for a foul. He got hit on the elbow there. Ryan Dorsey, Clarence Armstrong, and Chris Beaver are our referees, and Matt Painter is still looking for a foul. And one thing about FDU, they're going to play fast. And the turnaround is there for Sean Moore. And interesting, Zach Eady was on Sean Moore. Matt Painter told us he's going to put him on the worst shooter on the other team. He can't guard Almano, who's their biggest player. He's 6'6", because he's too good a three-point shooter. So he's trying to put him on Sean Moore to start the game. You saw after you apply some pressure, Tobin Anderson said they will have to be creative in order to win this game today. You're going to see a lot of different things thrown at Purdue. Well, they press 35% of the time, Andrew, which is one of the highest usage rates pressing-wise in the country. Look at that. Two guys around him quickly. Out to Mason Gillis for three. It's no good. And that's always a key with Purdue. They got it. That's why they changed their starting lineup to get their best shooting team out there. They want to surround Zach Eady with four shooters. And now he's on Joe Munden, who also is a streaky shooter. Munden spinning on Edie and is well short on the shot. And really, Edie, let's understand this, because he's 7-4. He doesn't have to get all the way up on him to be able to guard him and contest the shot. <laughs> Here's Braden Smith, the freshman, putting Purdue on the board. Well, he's had a really good year. Solid player. He's going to be really good down the road. Purdue coming off a Big Ten tournament title win on Sunday over Penn State. Beating the Nittany Lions by two, their 29th win of the year. Three on the way for Sean Moore. And that's, you know, we talked about this with Matt Painter because I talked about a game that I had against UConn once where I told one of my guys, don't guard that guy. He made his first shot and he looked at me and said, should I guard him? I said, no, don't guard him. He didn't make a shot the rest of the game. So you can't get crazy with your game plan. Too easy there for Brandon Newman on the other end. Newman the junior from Valparaiso, Indiana. That one nearly stolen away. Good defense by Braden Smith. How about Sean Moore going at Edie earlier? Yeah, but you know, somebody's got to be ready to give a little help. Like that time Fletcher Lawyer was right there. He's got to give a little help. They can't just leave him out to dry in the middle of the floor where the guy driving on him was that much smaller. That time they switched. Sean Moore, not this time. The Columbus native with a lot of family and friends in attendance here. Well, three guys that transferred with Tobin Anderson from St. Thomas Aquinas. Edie again, double teamed. And left alone is Smith. Knocks it down. In the Big Ten tournament, Braden Smith was only 2 of 10 from beyond the arc. You know, him and Lawyer really struggled. Actually, it was Jenkins coming off the bench that really saved Purdue in the Big Ten tournament. Ansley Almanor, and his jumper is no good. 
interesting that Purdue, number 331 in tempo, that's a good play defensively. Offensive foul. Well, you can watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device at NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. And Tobin Anderson bringing four players off the bench. I mean, he doesn't mind making the hockey substitutions, that's for sure. Getting everyone a taste after their first four victory over Texas Southern on Wednesday. A 23-point win, which is the third largest margin of victory in first four history. Dimitri Roberts with his first shot. He's their leading scorer, averaging better than 16 points per game. Newman fakes the three, takes the two. And the offensive rebound to Gillis and a foul is called. First foul against the Knights. That's working to box out. <laughs> Lucky the ball didn't come there or Tweedy was in trouble, I think. Matt Painter going to his bench with Caleb First and David Jenkins. Yeah, David Jenkins, who's been to Utah, been to TCU. This kid really made a huge difference. Started in South Dakota State, had a big year there. UNLV in UNLV between. UNLV in between. Five on the shot clock. Good hustle by FDU on the defensive end to scramble for it. And it's FDU basketball. A timeout on the floor. The 116 matchup in the East just underway in Columbus. A one seed this year for the fourth time in school history. Last time was back in 1996 when they lost in the second round to Georgia. Yeah, they've had a rough go in the last couple of tournaments. Grant Singleton from the outside. He's one of the three that followed Tobin Anderson over from Division II, St. Thomas Aquinas. And that was deep. He's the best three-point shooter of the guards. Edie's calling for it. They got two guys on Edie all the time. Somebody in front of him and somebody behind him. Every second. He can't get a touch. Oh, there's one with two on the shot clock. And Edie short, offensive rebound first and the putback. <laughs> Purdue cleaning up on the glass early, out rebounding FDU by four in the early going. They're number three in the nation in offensive rebounding percentage, so that's something that they do. Jump around the way, not there for Joel Emanuel. The foul is good. Cameron Tweedy. And they're going to come with this pressure and try to be as disruptive as they can be. Make them uncomfortable so that throwing in the ball to Zach Eady isn't the easiest thing in the world. Robin Anderson said we're going to mix it up, going to play zone. So he's only played about 40 possessions of zone his entire career before this year, and now he loves it. The lob too high for first, and a turnover by Purdue. Third of the half. One word can change everything. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, now playing only in theaters. Rated PG-13, get tickets now. This quickness and this pressure right now, early on, is bothering Purdue to a degree, there's no doubt. FDU is located in Teaneck, New Jersey. They play in the Northeast Conference. They finished second in their regular season this year as Roberts is off the mark. No look pass. And turnover number four. FDU did not win its conference championship game. They lost in the title game to Merrimack, but because Merrimack is transitioning from Division II to Division I. They weren't eligible to play in the NCAA tournament, so even though FDU lost its championship game, they're still here in the big dance, and Joe Munden is fouled. I gotta tell you, that time Purdue was completely asleep. They didn't know who they had 
And that's one of the problems here. You look, nobody, Zach Eady was probably supposed to have Munden and didn't know it. So you got a foul against a guy that small. And, he's, and Zach Eady's a guy who only averages like 1.6 fouls a game, which is incredible. Picks up his first. It sends Munden to the free throw line. And Eady is going to come out. Trey Kaufman Wren checks in for Purdue. Well, they're really high on this kid. Matt Painter told us this is going to be an all Big Ten center after Zach leaves. And he liked him especially in this game because he can defend some of the smaller Knights. There's definitely a place because a small Purdue team is still bigger than Fairley Dickinson. Left alone is David Jenkins. The three's not there, and out of bounds, last touch by FDU. I know that was like a simple thing, but how good was that pass from Braden <laughs> Smith? Right on the numbers, he threw. He was going one way, threw it to the opposite corner, and hit Jenkins right on the numbers. Smith is just one assist away from setting the Purdue freshman record. He would pass Bruce Parkinson. And a foul committed by Grant Singleton. You know, FDU, they forced 15 turnovers a game, one of the best turnover margins in the country, and they're coming out, and they want to make steals. That's what they do. Purdue only has two points on its last eight trips. Ethan Morton for three. And the rebound is secured by Singleton. Up ahead of the pack is Munden. Makes the catch and rejected. But on the glass, a foul as Almanor went up. That was a good push that time by FDU. Almanor. Hustling down. Foul was called on Kaufman Wren, sending Almanor to the line, where he's 88% on the year. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. After you did get a break, sometimes it's a little tricky when you play in the first four in Dayton, depending on where you have to travel for your next game, but it was an hour and 15 minute bus ride after they beat Texas Southern to here in Columbus. They said they were at their hotel by 11 o'clock on Wednesday night. I know you remember a couple of years ago when we had it to you, my son was an assistant coach and they had to go to Utah from Dayton. <laughs> a little tougher for that trip. Deep three by Smith, no good. And another rebound by FDU and a foul is called against Purdue. And they're gonna call this one on Mason Gillis. And that's already the fifth team foul against the Boilermakers. And we're talking about a team that does not foul. 13 a game. They're number one in the nation. Their opponents only shoot eight free throws a game against them. No turnover still for FTU. Almanor for three. Oh, save! A fight for it, and it's knocked away. Good defense, but Almanor recovers. Now a deep three, Sindicate doesn't get the bounce, and a foul inside on Munden. If I'm Matt Painter, I'm telling my guys, you guys better get on the glass. Are you kidding me? And right away, Zach Eady's coming back in. Come on, guys. I mean, I understand there's certain things that this team will do better than us, but rebounding should not be one of them. FDU appears to have a quicker step right now. No question. They are playing like we got nothing to lose, so we're just going to go out there and play. And that's what they're doing. They're playing. And they're playing hard. They've got to get Zach Eady involved in this game. That's it, period. And not out there either. Smith bounces it to Edie. The turnaround, no good. Edie, 0 for 3 to begin this one. 
That three on the way is good. Dimitri Roberts grabbed his right ankle after that three went in. But FDU goes up 15 to 9. That was some shot. Chance of FDU from the fans here in Columbus. They got to get better spacing for Duke because they got to get that second guy out of there like that. Edu hey! with the flush. They got to get their spacing together. They cannot allow this double team to go on this entire game. First points for Purdue in the last three minutes and 45 seconds. Roberts, nice bounce pass inside, and the finish for Tweedy. You know, I didn't think it would be after 10 minutes, 6-6 six, six points in the paint. Was not expecting that. And FDU allowed 46 points in the paint Wednesday against Texas Southern. Edie left alone. Now, Tobin Anderson said, look, we know Zach Edie is going to get his. We just don't want somebody else to go for 25. Well, right now, the big thing is that Purdue's only one for five. Oh, look, look at this. this. Hiru Blygen with the bucket. Midway through the first half, and the Knights of Fairleigh Dickinson have a six-point lead. The problem right now for Purdue is they haven't been able to stop them. They've given up 19 points in 10 minutes. That's a 40-point great pace. Newman with the left hand. No, Edie, the offensive board, trying to go back up, and he's fouled. Timeout with 9.44 to go. An interesting start in this one. Yeah, how about that three right there? And then they finally get the ball in to Jack Edie. 19-13, FDU. We're back in Columbus. I'm here with Purdue head coach Matt Painter. Coach, FDU is scoring at the bucket. What is challenging your defense? Yeah, right there, they, they make a back cut. A guy over helps. They do a great job of cutting when they have the basketball, especially in the middle of the floor with their back cuts, their back doors. And we got to stay with them. We got to stay with them. We got to take away those layups. We got to give a little bit of help to Zach. They have athletes that are driving the basketball. We got to be in those gaps, but we can't get exposed and give up any threes. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. And that is definitely part of it is because Zach is always going to be guarding a guy that's small and quick. So they're going to have to give him a little bit of help off the dribble. But the way they have defended Zach Eady, you know, my son told me when I was coming to these games, because those guys defend post people really well. They make it very hard for them to catch the ball. Two shots for Zach Eady after the foul was called on Hiru Blajan. Taking a look at our tournament summary. The first four team has advanced to the round of 32 and 11 of the last 12 tournaments. Pitt over Iowa State earlier today. Out of chalk so far, but a lot more basketball to come before the night is over. Edie goes two out of two at the line. Edie started 0 for 3 from the floor. He was scoreless in the first 8 minutes and 49 seconds, but since then he scored six points. Singleton. And a travel against Emmanuel. Tobin Anderson's been throwing a lot at Zach Eady so far defensively. Yeah, a lot of two guys, and that's why they've got to get better spacing out there. They're making it really hard for him to get it. And even that shot there, he was pushed out a little bit. And look at Munden coming from the weak side, double teaming him. If you're not going to make three point shots when a team guards you like this, you're going to have a problem. And if you told Van Anderson, say, listen, if they are good from three, we're going to go home. That's all. And right now, they haven't been good from three. Good defense there by Almanor to knock that one away. And the less three-point shots they make, the worse it's going to be for Zach Eady in the lane like that. David Jenkins coming back on the floor. Brandon Newman goes to the bench. Eight on the shot clock for the Boilermakers. 
You know, he was starting Caleb first and Ethan Morton, and he went to Newman and Mason Gillis to get a little better shooting. Dimitri Roberts commits the foul with the shot clock winding down. And now both teams with five fouls apiece. Little zone now by FDU. Nice little change up. Edie draws the double. Good pass. In the corner, a fake, and now Fletcher Lawyer for three. He's been struggling. And the rebound is grabbed by FDU. Edie trailing the play. No look pass. Roberts comes in and a charge. And that's the second on Dimitri Roberts. That's a big foul that's against a, FDU. That's a huge foul because they have three guys that they cannot play without. Almanor, Roberts, and Singleton can't play without one of those guys. So Tobin Anderson takes Roberts out with 8.31 to go in the first half. Back-to-back -back turnovers now by FDU, and Gene Steratore telling us from New York he agreed with that call. The lawyer has really been struggling. You said it, Andrew. I mean, he can't make a shot. He's averaging four points his last four games. Purdue gives it right back. That's their fifth turnover. On the attack, wild shot not there, and Edie holds on to the rebound. Smith. Out to Lawyer. Wide open look. And that one really is good. And boy, does he need that. He really needed that. Like I said, four points a game his last four games. Matt Painter said, yes, he's slumping, but he hasn't lost his confidence. And you saw it on that shot. And now the Purdue fans have come to life here in Columbus. Great pass. And Gillis with the finish. Off the feed from Smith. It's a 7-0 run for Purdue. And one thing that you really do have to, now Purdue likes to play half court. Pushing the ball against this team is not bad because that way you can be aggressive against the pressure and you need to be. Rising tough turnaround, no. And a foul is called over the back on Almanor. And the momentum has shifted here in Columbus. Well, Lawyer's got to knock these out. He's wide open there. Purdue on their way back. Up one on FDU. We're back in Columbus. I'm here with FDU head coach Tobin Anderson. Coach, momentum was in your favor, but the last couple minutes, Purdue has been able to score. How do you get back on track? Well, we, we turned it over. We, we had a couple bad shots. We had a, char a charge, a tough shot against Eddie inside. So those shots lead, then lead to transition. We don't want to give up transition. It's hard enough for us in the half court. Once they get easy shots, it makes it even harder for us. So we got to do a better job. Now, our offense will dictate our defense a little bit, and uh, the last couple possessions have not been great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Lap, you can go home. We got Tobin Anderson. He can he can do the analysis and coach at the same time. There's a look at our bracket with Memphis and Florida Atlantic still to come later tonight here in Columbus. It's a 7-0 run for Purdue. And he mentioned those last couple of bad trips. Two turnovers in the last five trips for FDU. Well, you know, that this is also how they play. Not, they don't turn the ball over a lot. That's one thing they don't do. They only average 12 turnovers a game as we're seeing Zach Eadie's bomb. Mom Julia stands at 6-3. Zach is 7-4 from Toronto, and he gets both free throws to go. 7 minutes to go in the first half, and it's a 3-point Purdue lead. They spread you out, and they run their offense very quick. These guys are cutting hard, I can tell you that. I was just about to ask you if you'd bring Roberts back in with 2,000. He is at the scorer's table as FDU turns it over again. I think you have to because you got to keep this thing close. Smith gives it right back and then a reach-in foul. That's going to go on David Jenkins. You bring him in, you try to get three minutes out of him because you really want to get to the half in this thing. Roberts back in with the two fouls.
Tobin Anderson guiding FDU to its 11th 20 win season in program history. This is a team that went 4 and 22 a year ago. Well, plus 16 win differential from last year. Only Southern Miss has been better this year in the country. Singleton's three is not there, and a good rebound by Gillis. Braden Smith with three assists in the first half. That gives him 150 on the year, a new Purdue freshman record. Zach Eady offensive rebound. Back out lawyer, wide open. Missed it. Goals you got to make. You get an offensive rebound. Plus, Edie was very close to the basket. He probably could have shot that himself. Lawyer's got to knock that out. He couldn't be any more open. Here's Roberts. Sean Moore, step back three is no good. Lawyer on the drive this time. The floater is there. Five points for the freshman Fletcher Lawyer. Good move by Lawyer. 11 points in a row for the Boilermakers. And the problem is in the half court. Now they're finding it hard. Missing a couple of shots. They need Roberts and Singleton to make shots. Munden's triple is good, and that stops the 11-0 run. And now here comes the pressure. And you have to attack this. Get somebody at half court and go. That's back court. That is. And that's the seventh turnover for Purdue. You can watch CBS Sports HQ for free. 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. I mean, they average 11 turnovers a game, and they have seven with four and a half to go in the half. And so give some credit to FDU, no, but a lot of these are self-inflicted by Purdue. You know, they are, but the speed of the game may be causing some of those that look self-inflicted. Just they're, they're, they're not used to playing fast. They're one of the slower playing teams in the country. Almanor traveled. You know, and sometimes you turn it over because the game is a little too hectic. It's a little different. Let's face it, Purdue has not been in a real groove, even though they had this little run here. They haven't been in a real good groove the whole game. And they've struggled from deep, shooting two for nine from beyond the arc. And you got to attack. See, Lloyd, you got to attack that, Lloyd. If they double team at half court and you throw it over that, you got to go. And they're so used to waiting for Zach, which I can't blame him. <laughs> but you have to pick and choose. You do have to attack pressure. It's the only way to play against a team that presses you. Edie in double figures. He's got 10 points and six rebounds so far. FDU didn't turn it over on its first 20 trips, but they have four turnovers in the last nine possessions. Flygen. I don't know if Edie got a piece of it, but he certainly altered it. And now he's guarding Blygen because Blygen is the weakest shooter they have in the game. Lawyer misses another good look out of bounds. It'll be FDU ball when we come back. Well, Purdue finally got going a little bit. An 11-0 run. And Zach Eady with the hammer. He's got 10 early against the Knights. A festive St. Patrick's Day here in Columbus. That guy's been celebrating for a while. Purdue 26, FDU 22. As we look at our game summary, Purdue plus seven on the glass. It's a 13 to three run. And Steve, it really changed when Roberts picked up his second foul. Right after that, Purdue went on a 7-0 run. Yeah, I mean, there's three guys, as I said, they can't play without. Roberts is definitely one of those three. And Zach Eady just started to get it going a little bit. 
They've been throwing everything at him, but the kitchen sink, that's for sure. But eventually, it's going to wear them out. They did a great job on him early. Look at these doubles coming from the weak side. The thing that's hurting Purdue is they're only two for ten from three, so they can keep loading up on Zach Eady if they want to until, until they start making some shots. Eady is not out there right now, sitting on the bench as we approach three minutes to play. Singleton getting to the hoop. High off the glass. High. That thing was at the top of the backboard. Sumter, South Carolina native in his first season at FDU. And here they're in that zone again. Well, these two guards, Roberts and Singleton, I mean, they went to four straight Division II NCAA tournaments. Almanor commits his second foul. Let's go AT&T 5G above the rim for this last play. Yeah, I mean, look, you see, wait till you see how high this thing is up. Wow. That's got Massé on it. That guy was a pool, <laughs> must be a pool player. Willie Moscone would be proud of that. You know, Willie Mas Yeah, you've mentioned him before. I have, right? Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah. Old school. Old school. Kaufman Wren makes the front end of the one and one. That was the seventh team foul. And it looks like Tobin Anderson is going to keep Almanor out there with two. Yeah, he can't have, you know, he probably should take one of the two guys out. Because he doesn't need either one of them getting their third. But you know how he's thinking. He said, let's face it, you're a 16 seed. So you want to get to halftime in this game. And you know it can get away from you quick. Singleton bounces it, and it's Blyzen for two. They can't guard these two guards, though, I'll tell you that. Singleton and Roberts, they kind of go wherever they want. Singleton and Roberts have been roommates for the last five years, going back to their time at St. Thomas Aquinas in D2. They've combined for over 3,500 collegiate points. And a lot of wins. Granted, it was at the D2 level. The win's a win. The win is a win. You see how high Singleton went up for that? Almanor cuts and had it taken away by Ethan Morton. Smith steps into a three. And Purdue cannot get it going from the outside. They're two for 11. You know, they're only at 33% three-point shooting team, but they're going to have to do something from out there in this game. And this is on the heels of going six for 28 in the big, big Ten championship game on Sunday. Singleton. Offensive rebound. And, and you know, FDU's been a very good offensive... Oh, what a pass. And the finish by Tweedy. And FDU regains the lead late in the first half. Timeout, Purdue. Since Edie went out, it's a 6-1 run for Fairleigh Dickinson. FDU's mascot, Nitro the Knight, showing off his moves, and we'll have some moves for you on AT&T at the half. Scores and highlights coming up on AT&T at the half. All right, lap your chalk talk. Break it down for us. <laughs> well, Purdue's having all kinds of trouble staying in front of Roberts. You're going to see right here because of that off -air. We're going to stop it right there. So he beats Newman, and now Kaufman Wren is here, and he doesn't know what to do, but there's got to be a rotation back here if he's going to come up and help. First just stands there, doesn't rotate inside. Easy basket. Edie comes back in for the final minute. They go right to him. He's got a dozen. You know, one thing we got to know about Zach Eady, he's had a couple of games of 30 this year. He had 32 and 18 against Indiana and a loss. So these other guys are going to have to step up. And that was Tobin Anderson's game plan. Roberts backs it out with eight on the shot clock, defended by Newman. Roberts dribbling oh. around everyone. Roberts! Oh. Hello! Oh. And Tobin Anderson calls a timeout with 25 seconds to go. How about Roberts getting to the 10 and the left hand finish. Tobin Anderson in his first season as a Division I head coach has a one point lead over top seeded Purdue.
And that last play by Dimitri Roberts is everyone buzzing here in Columbus. He's got five points. Yeah, I mean, Zach Eady was in trouble switching to him. I can tell you that. He's not used to guarding guys 5'8 in the Big Ten. That's for sure. Smith, Smith in trouble in the corner. And he turns it over to Singleton. Singleton inside and the finish by Blasian. Wow, they had caught him off guard on that. Clock is running. Ten seconds to go. Another one's coming. Smith, oh, he's fouled with six seconds left, and Tobin Anderson can't believe it. Well, give him credit. They called the timeout, and they got the perfect trap. You can't stop. That's the worst place you could be. And Blygin with the finish. Foul is on Braden Reynolds, so it will be a one-and-one one for Purdue. With six seconds left. And Braden Smith at the free throw line. Three assists for Smith. Now the all-time Purdue freshman record holder with 150 on the year. And he's an excellent free throw shooter at 86% on the season. Smith makes a pair, six seconds left. As quick as this kid is, he's getting a shot. Here's Roberts at midcourt. Roberts over to Almanor for three. And that is how the first half comes to an end. Purdue has some work to do here in Columbus. Through 20 minutes, the 16 seed FDU has a one point lead. Purdue 2 of 11 from deep in that first half. And Jamie's with Tobin Anderson. Coach just told me he didn't think he'd see me at halftime. But coach, we have to talk about how you looks like you gave your defense gasoline before this game. Why was that exactly how they needed to play? You know, we just we just play with so much toughness and so much grit. And like they want they believe they belong here. They want to be here. They're not in awe of anything at all. We've been tough. Now listen, it's a, we're halfway through. It's a, it's a 40 minute game. We played really well for 20 minutes. We got to keep it going. There's a long ways to go. They're a great team. They're a tremendous team. We got to play that hard again for 20 more minutes. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Back in Columbus with our Ritz first half stats. FDU leads by one, outscoring Purdue in the paint. Unbelievable start in this one. Back courtside with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from Jamie Erdahl coming up. There's a lot of things Purdue has to clean up, and one of them is certainly turnovers with eight in the first half. They average 11 for a game. They have eight, and the big thing is the one thing you worry about Purdue all year about winning a title, that they have these freshman guards who are very good. But they're freshmen, and Braden Smith right now has already got a career high at halftime in turnovers. He's got five in the first half. He's going to have to get adjusted to playing against these smaller, quicker guys, and hopefully he's going to be able to do it now in the second half for Matt Painter. You know, I'm interested in what Matt Painter said to his guys at halftime. Did he rip them? Did he say, hey, guys, calm down, everything's all right? It's going to be interesting. Let's hear what he had to say, Jamie Erdahl. Well, I can't say for a fact if he ripped him, but the volume was loud. I can tell you that much. He was calmed down by the time he got to the hallway with me to have this conversation. Coach, I asked you what to ask him. I said, Is, are you sped up? He said, only on defense. We're getting sped up on their dribble penetration. He said, we got to get back in defensive transition because Zach Eady is getting mismatched and it's making us all discombobulated. Well, there you go. You know, that that is true because he's got to guard a guy that's so much smaller and quicker than him. They're trying to give him the guy who can't shoot, but the guy's driving on him. Gillis for three, and that's a good start to the second half for Purdue. Hey, come on, this kid made nine threes against Penn State in a game earlier in the season. He certainly can get it done. That was a Mackey Arena record when he had 29 against the Nittany Lions. Sixth time this season, Purdue has trailed at the half. They've come back to win three of them as Sean Moore has an answer. 27% three-point shooter. And he's got two threes. And there's the pressure. You got to attack this. Now you got to go. There you go. To Edie. Turnaround. 
Oh. No. Rebound by Gillis, rejected by Almanor. Tipped up in the air and out of bounds. It'll stay with Purdue. I like the attack of the pressure that time, but, you know, Edie's got to finish that one, obviously. Almanor, the team leader in blocks this season for the Knights. The only other time that a Big Ten team that was seeded first trailed the 16th seed at halftime was 1985. Michigan trailed at the half against FDU. And that's got to be a travel. That's nothing another. called. Wow. And now Smith left alone. Misses the three. You get Braden Smith leaving his feet in the worst place catch. You can't tell me that he's not a little shook against these guys right now. Moore again, no. Not this time. They find Edie. Here comes the help. Edie had it knocked away, but Smith is there. Inside again to Edie, and there is a foul on Almanor before the shot. And that's the third foul on Almanor. You take a look here. Braden Smith leaves his feet. That, that is a travel. All right, that's a big foul there. Almanor goes out with the three fouls. He's the biggest guy they have at 6'6", 219. Gillis. And the rebound to Roberts. We got Edie on London, and he made a three in the first half. And an offensive foul called on Joe Munden. And here comes the pressure. Lawyer gets it into Smith. Smith back to Lawyer, and they bring it across. A lot of fighting down low as FDU tries to guard the 7-4 Zach Eady. Right now a 6-4 body on him in Cameron Tweedy. Gillis for three. And Purdue continues to struggle from the outside. Yeah, if they don't make threes, they're going to have a problem in this game. Tweedy around Edie, and that one wasn't going to go, but Tweedy gets it back. I mean, why would Tweedy <laughs> challenge Zach Edie? More. Oh, wow. oh, this is something here. You know, it, it begs the question, when does the heat start to mount on Purdue? Maybe I'm bringing it up a little early. Good play there. And a hard foul. It'll send Mason Gillis to the line. Attack the pressure. I mean, this is a heck of a play. Makes a tough shot more. One leg, fade away. Moore averages just over six points per game. He's got 10 in what is a homecoming for the junior, a Columbus, Ohio native, Reynoldsburg High School, that he was super excited to be home. And he's playing like it. Yeah, I'd say. The real competition is on HGTV's door-to-door -door renovation war. Four teams tackle four identical houses on an all-new Rock the Block, Monday, 9, 8 central on HGTV. You know, the question start to be asked, like, when does the heat start to mount on Purdue? You lost to St. Peter's last year, it was a 15 seed. Maybe not yet, but if this keeps up, it's coming. I say one thing that's on their side, a lot of times when you have a situation like this, the entire crowd goes for the underdog. That's not the case here because there's so many Purdue fans that have come. That might play into this a little bit down the stretch. It could. Level left. Oh. Edie got a piece of it, but right there to put it in is Tweedy. This is one of those games. The bounces just keep going to FDU, going and going and going. Besides all the good things they're doing, they're getting all the bounces. Look at this. That was Reynolds who got a hand on it. 
He thought that Purdue touched it last, but it will stay with the Boilermakers. Ethan Morton is going to come in for Braden Smith. They really could use Jenkins to step up. Yeah, he's been quiet in this one. He's and got I'm, the ball here in trouble. And I'm not even talking about shooting. Lawyer is wide open, and he misses it, but Gillis the offensive rebound. And then Gillis, it was deflected by FDU. It'll stay with Purdue. And I'm not even talking about Jenkins making shots, obviously, that would help, but just maybe somebody to run the point now because Braden Smith has been out of sorts, let's face it. Jenkins yet to score. He's 0 of 2. Purdue has missed six consecutive shots. Gillis trying to get it to Edie. And now Lawyer. They're not guarding more. Shot clock at two, and it's taken away by the Knights. Emmanuel in the paint. And now Tweedy going at Edie again, and he's going to get rid of it. Rising tough step back. No, oh, and Edie the rebound. You got to push it. Try and get something a little easy once in a while. Because setting up against this defense has been not easy for Purdue. Jenkins. Nope. Edie tipped it back out to Morton. Great play by Zach Edie. Lawyer had it poked away. Lyzen trying to go coast to coast, and then a foul is called. FDU, five minutes into the second half, and they're still in front by three. The Knights have come to play in Columbus. Nabil, thank you as Gonzaga the three seed out west. Meanwhile, here in Columbus, FDU has a three-point lead with Zach Eady's mom, Julia, watching on. How about some love for my home state of New Jersey, Lap? Of course, you had Princeton beat Arizona yesterday, and last year, we all know what St. Peter's did, and Tobin Anderson said St. Peter's run last year has given teams like us that we can pull off an upset. There's no doubt. I mean, it happens. It's not something, I'll tell you what, 20 years ago when guys were staying four years, it didn't happen. Now it's happening all the time. More off the mark, but Tweedy is right there. They have gotten all these, they're a good rebounding team in their own league, but they're playing a team that out-rebounds Big Ten teams by 10 a game. They had to put one up, and it's in! Tweedy! The shot clock was winding down. A 9-2 run for FDU. Edie inside with Tweedy on him. Counted in one. And Edie fired up. They need some emotion. They definitely do. I mean, you see here, the end of the shot clock, guy who averages three points a game knocks one out there. And then Zach Edie and one. 14 points, eight rebounds for Edie. First team All-American, Big Ten Player of the Year, and the favorite to win the Naismith National Player of the Year. He would be only the second Purdue player to win that award, along with Glenn Robinson. And he's a perfect five of five at the free throw line tonight. First field goal for Purdue since 30 seconds into the half. Reynolds on the wing. And a bad pass taken away by Smith. They really need to push this. They got to turn over. Go get something that loosens things up a little bit. Smith, tough bounce pass. Edie able to handle it and finish. And we're tied at 41. And the Purdue fans have come to life in Columbus. Moore. 
Not this time, and Edie secures the rebound. They're looking to push again. I like Smith that. in transition. Morton passes on the three, drives baseline, and lost it onto the ground. A scramble, he's trying to get a timeout. Instead, they get a tie up, and the possession arrow favors Purdue. Well, he's fortunate there because Purdue had the ball, and Ethan Morton was going to call a waste of timeout there for no reason. They had the possession arrow. You know Zach Eady's story, played hockey, played baseball. He has so many different skills. I mean, just fielding that pass right there is impressive. That really was a great catch. And you know what happened? They ran up transition. Even Morton didn't want to shoot that. He was wide open in the corner. Dimitri Roberts back on the floor for FDU. Morton will take this one as a foul. And it's going to go on Joe Munden. Not on the shot. It was away from the shot. But problems now for Munden as he picks up his fourth foul. Yeah, it's a foul. Collided with Braden Smith. And Munden heads out. You can't run a guy over like that to get through a screen. So he sits with 13 minutes to go. The other thing about Philly, they, they really force you to, when they get you on the sideline, they keep you there. Shot clock down to five. Edie to a cutting Gillis with the left hand, and one! When you're in the half court, the more touches Zach Eady gets, the better, because he's drawing all that attention. It's got to lead to something and somebody open. Gillis has nine points and six rebounds. Could have played his collegiate ball here in Columbus. He had an offer out of high school from Ohio State. But the Newcastle, Indiana native elected to go to Purdue. FDU's foul trouble is now adding up. Four on Munden, three on Almanor. The, the team now that, that Purdue has in the game, Andrew, is, an, is not a good team in terms of getting away from double teams. Because they're going to double off first, they're going to double off Morton, they're going to be packing in the lane. Fifth to you big time against this group. 8-0-1 for Purdue. Shot clock winding down to five. Moore, step back three. Edie had it over to Smith. Again, looking to push tempo inside, Caleb first, and it's 10 in a row for Purdue. They've been at their best in this game, pushing the ball and not allowing that pressure to set up. Roberts, high over Edie, not even close, out of bounds to Purdue. And the Boilermakers have responded. This is what they need to do. Push that ball so they can't set up their pressure. Caleb first, Boilermakers up five. Winner of this one, we'll see the winner of our nightcap here between Memphis and Florida Atlantic as we check in with Jamie. Guys, Tobin Anderson's huddles are incredibly compelling. He just told his guys, we've been throwing the punches. We just got punched back. How are we going to respond? He's trying to break it down into four-minute games. You're going to see this press, but then after that, he wants them to stay up, keep your heels on the line, and contest. they're going to front ED2 because they don't think Purdue will lob it to him. Edie's got it here. Tied up inside, and he draws the foul. That's interesting that they don't think that they'll lob it to him. I mean, why wouldn't you lob it to him? I guess they're afraid of the weak side. They think that, that Purdue's afraid of the weak side help, but... Emmanuel is called for the foul. Tobin Anderson has brought Almanor back with three fouls. Well, the rules are simple. Win to get in. Tune in as NBA teams battle to earn their spot in the playoffs. The NBA play-in tournament begins April 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern on TNT. 
ED one out of two. I think this is a really key time for Purdue. You got this lead now, you're up six, you're the one seed. You need to really not let this team come back right now. Largest lead of the night for the Boilermakers. You need a stop here. Roberts from the free throw line, counted in the foul. And that's exactly, they go up six, and they allow this team to just hang in there and hang in there, and that a lot of times spells trouble in the end. And Roberts has been a little quiet today. Only has seven points. He's their leading scorer, averaging close to 17 per game. If he heats up, that will change the dynamic here down the stretch. That was a big play because they were on a roll finally, Purdue. It's Jenkins bringing it up. And there's that run and jump. As soon as you cross half court, they're jumping you with another defender. Now you got to get it into the big guy. Seven on the shot clock. Look at the pressure. I don't like Mason Gillis being out all this time either. Lawyer with two goes up from the line. Won't go. Tipped up and tipped out to Lawyer. Edie was involved in that. They're not even guarding Caleb first. Caleb first just caught the ball on the wing. Then Joel is Manuel's not going near him. Smith off the mark. Edie tips it out again, but this time out of bounds. FDU trying to make history. They would just be the second 16 seed behind UMBC to ever win a game. The Northeast Conference has never won a round of 64 game, and FDU 0-5 in this round. And Mason Gillis now is back in. I think he's their most reliable other guy than Zach Eden. 27th double-double of the year for Edie. That leads the country. Roberts, 15 for Yes. And Edie just couldn't get up on that screen fast enough. Five hole run for the Knights. These guys aren't going away. They had a chance there, but they came right back. Midway through the second half, Gillis is wide open. And the rebound is grabbed by Singleton. Singleton for three. It's good! Matt Painter needs to time out. Eight-0 run for the Knights. They're back in front by two. And now the crowd starting to ride with the underdog. Chance of FDU. Morton for three. Tough shot. Can't answer. Edie's right there to clean it up. Can't stop these guys. And one thing about Matt Painter, he doesn't play zone. And they've had trouble guarding these guys off the bounce all night long. Robin Anderson telling Dimitri Roberts, let's just slow it down a bit, catch our breath, nine minutes to go. Here goes Roberts, right at Edie, to the hoop, lost control, out of bounds. It'll stay with FDU, but only three on the shot clock. And FDU's putting Munden back in with four fouls. Interesting sub there with nine minutes to go. They need a quick one here. And it's Smith knocking it out of bounds. No time came off the clock. And so now the officials are at the monitor. Brian Dorsey, Clarence Armstrong, and Chris Beaver. All right, 3.2 on the shot clock. Roberts, all 5'8 of them to inbound. Oh, they made a mistake. They Big miscommunication there. Singleton has to put it up. And a shot clock violation. 
They were fortunate on that. Singleton never had it cleanly, and it's turnover number seven by FDU. Ten turnovers for Purdue tonight, and just three of 18 for deep from deep. And now you look at their last two games from beyond the arc. They are a combined six for 46. Well, you know, they've only been, and now FDU back in that zone, they've only been 33% all year, but they need to make some. There's a wide open one. Newman can't knock it down. Edie is fouled on the putback. And, and you know what, Andrew? FDU has dared them to shoot the three, which is understandable. Say, hey, if they can, with that big guy, if they make threes, too, we're going to lose. So if they miss, now maybe we got a chance. And they are missing like crazy. And every one they miss, the pressure mounts on the next one. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Edie has 21 points. The only other Boilermaker in double figures is Gillis with 10. Edie one out of two, but Newman comes in for the rebound. Newman took his eye off the ball. Munden the other way. Munden in. Counted in the foul. I mean, take a look at that turnover. I mean, just bounces off his head. 11 Purdue turnovers. That matches their season average and that FDU bench is going wild this is a team that won four games last year they were four and 22 Munden completes the three-point play A go. Now you got to go. Gillis is going, but Singleton takes it away. How about the hustle from Grant Singleton? These guys are relentless. Singleton. Almost. That was a deep three. Eight minutes to go. FDU up by two. And an offensive foul. Holy Knights of Columbus. FDU is not going away. The Knights, the 16 seed, up by two on Purdue. FDU, the 16 seed, leads Purdue by two. We got to take you there. It's only happened one time before. 2018 UNBC with Ryan Odom as head coach. Knocking off number one, Virginia, by 20. Will it happen again? Still a lot of time left, but Tobin Anderson and FDU up by two. Hey, he said, the more I watched, the more I thought we could beat him. I guess he wasn't lying. We asked Matt Painter about what Tobin Anderson said, and all he said was, our team has seen it, and he's entitled to his opinion. Will he be right? 7.50 to go. And Zach Eadie's guarding Morrow's actually had a really good game. Roberts trying to get to the hoop. Sends it back out to Moore. Shot clock at four. Moore steps into one. And hits again. This guy coming back to Columbus and having a day in his hometown. 13-3 run. Smith having some trouble. Locates Gillis. Good job by Gillis coming to meet the ball. They just got it over in time. Lawyer for three. Oh, they did. did he need that? Them and he needed that. His second three of the night. Yeah. 
Moore. Not again. Watch out, watch out. Quick shot there and taken away by Purdue. Smith driving baseline, lob to Edie, tough pass and a foul. Follow Highlight Her for everything you need to see her do in sports and culture. Scan the QR code now and don't miss another moment. These Purdue fans in Columbus are stunned. Boilermakers have won five consecutive games, have only lost five games all year. Last year, knocked out in the Sweet 16 by St. Peter's from New Jersey, and now in trouble against another New Jersey team, FDU. Out of bounds to the Knights. Got to make those free throws. was open underneath they didn't see him he's got it now over to Roberts with 620 to play Roberts at the free throw line nowhere to go lost it great defense by Purdue they held their ground that time didn't go for any of the fakes Edie came over and gave a little help I mean you can see it where we are, and I'm sure it translates on TV, but FDU is the shortest team in Division I. They average 6-3 per player. Purdue, one of the tallest teams in the country, led by Zach Eady, and yet here they are, a one-point game coming home. The game has changed. It used to be about height more so than it is today. Today it's about perimeter play, spread, make threes. Gillis doesn't make the three, and it's tipped to Moore. You know, it's never a good shot when you hesitate, hesitate, hesitate. Look at his shot. Singleton off the front of the rim, but it hit Edie in the face. Out of bounds to FDU. You've said it, Steve, but it seems like every bounce and break is going FDU's way, and that's the anatomy of an upset. <laughs> oh, 100%. Look at that one. Bounces off the kid's head and goes out of bounds. I mean... Every bounce seemed to have gone FDU's way. Don't get me wrong, they're playing hard, no question. Lajan baseline. Now Almanor with the shot clock at six, halfway down and out. What a rebound by Moore. How does Moyer not get that rebound? He had position. He has to come down with that one. Sean Moore has picked a good time to have his best game of the year. He's got the ball here. He's feeling it, but that one is too strong. Tipped off the glass. Blyshen had it, and now Edie secures it. Five minutes to go. FDU by one. Smith turns it over. His sixth of the night. Reynolds the other way. Bounces it. And before the shot, a foul is called on the floor. It's now seven turnovers for Braden Smith. A career high. I mean, he just doesn't really understand that these guys are coming from everywhere. the four fouls for FDU. Almanor on the drive, tried to bounce one down low, and a kicked ball. Last two years, Purdue has lost to double-digit seeds. Last year, St. Peter's in the Sweet 16, and then two years ago in the first round, they fell to North Texas. Moore, oh, he thought about it. You know, he's the guy who got Edie on, and that's why he's getting all these shots. Now Roberts comes to get it. FDU's leading scorer from Mount Vernon, New York. Out to Moore. He's going to take this one. 
And the rebound to Jenkins. Boy, he's had wide open looks, but he's got wide open looks for a reason. He's a 27% three-point shooter. Purdue fans trying to spur their team on. They need it here. Down by one. Gillis for three. Oh. Air ball, and it's caught by Moore. And if you don't think these guys are feeling the heat now, <laughs> then you've never been here. Purdue is four of 22 from deep. And now inside, four minutes to go. And they've made stops, and they can't score now. Robert steps into one. And Edie, the easy rebound. Push it up. Best thing you've had in this half is when you pushed it. Six misses in a row for the Knights. But Purdue hasn't scored in three and a half minutes. Where will the Boilermakers turn? Guess who? Edie draws the double. Five to shoot. Out to Smith for three. No good. And the rebound is tipped around and grabbed by FDU. I mean, Edie should have just taken that one. I'm sorry. Singleton had it poked away by Smith. Good defense by the freshman. And that takes us to our final media timeout. Don't go anywhere. FDU by one. Fairly Dickinson with our game summary, trying to become the second 16 seed to ever win in the round of 64. And our Gene Steratore is with us. And Gene, you want to take a closer look at a potential hook and hold from the 455 mark? Yeah, it was, guys. And it's Reynolds here on this break, as we see. And then when Lawyer gets this hand, their arm right underneath at this point, you start to see him lift and hold as if he's almost just restricting him from making a pass here on a fast break. I'm surprised they had a common foul on the play, but I'm a little surprised they didn't take the time to look at this and make a ruling as to whether they thought there was an F1 type of a, of a foul occurring. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't look. When I saw it, I thought he didn't really pull him with that arm. That's why I didn't know that it'd be a hook and hold, but you have to Gene showing it. Yeah, I guess, you know, he stopped the kid from making a play. Gene, thank you. Three minutes to go. Shot clock down to eight. More on the drive. Knocked away by Lawyer. Oh, a foul is called. Matt Painter and the Purdue fans cannot believe it. Shot clock was winding down as well. Here's another look. Wow. A lot of ball. A lot of ball. So Sean Moore at the free throw line, a 73% free throw shooter. And Edie also came down yeah. hard. But the foul was called against Lawyer. Clutch free throws for Sean Moore. Who's going to step up for Purdue now? And here's the pressure. Attack. It's the freshman Smith to set it up for the Boilermakers. Almanor battling down low with Edie. They can't get it to him. Smith for three. No good. Edie the rebound. Knocked away. And FDU has it. Somehow the smallest team in the country comes away with the rebound. He brought it down. Zach Edie had it. He brought it down, which is the worst thing you could do. Roberts, step back jumper, halfway down and out, and Edie the rebound. Two minutes to go. They're not even guarding Mason Gillis. I mean, he doesn't want to shoot it. You can see it. He doesn't want to shoot it. He's, He's looking for Edie. Maybe. Shot clock at eight. Good defense by Moore to knock it away with seven on the shot clock. Andrew, nobody wants to shoot the ball. You can see it. And Matt Painter calls timeout. With 1.44 on the clock, FDU still in front of Purdue. Now out of the timeout, just seven seconds on the shot clock for Purdue. 
Matt Painter, one of the best in the country, scoring after timeouts. Looking for Edie, of course. Knocked away. Great defense by Moore. He gets it back. Moore flies in and scores. Five point game. Smith through traffic. Into the corner it goes. Lawyer wide open. Throws it. Boy, I tell you what. Braden Smith, very, very lucky they didn't call the charge on that pass. Here's another look. Mmm. Wow. No call was made. The three by Lawyer is good. And it's a two-point FTU advantage. Just need to get a stop here. Trying to become just the second 16 seed to ever win in the round of 64. Everyone in Columbus on their feet. A little surprised they're pulling it out like this from now. Tour straight away three. It's good! <laughs> Timeout, FDU with 103 on the clock. You know, basically, Matt Painter is stuck to playing man-to-man. -man. Zach Eady's been guarding more the whole game because he's a 27% three-point shooter. And he buries that one when Zach got caught trying to help too much on that pick and roll. Sean Moore has scored the last nine points for FDU. When Tobin Anderson got this job before the season, he brought three players with him from St. Thomas Aquinas of Division II in Spark Hill, New York. All the headlines were Dimitri Roberts and Grant Singleton, their top two scorers. But the third guy was Sean Moore, averaging just six points per game. He has been a rock star tonight with 19 points, a new career high. Winner of this one will take on the winner of our nightcap between Memphis and Florida Atlantic. I mean, what a day for the best game of your life. I mean, just absolutely incredible. And we've said it before, but the best game of his life is coming in his hometown. He's a Columbus native. Said he was excited to be home, and he is playing lights out for FDU. 14 of his 19 have come in the second half. All right, Steve, 104 on the clock. Where are you going if you're Purdue? Where are you going? I mean, you have to, You got to right? go to Zach Eady. Obviously, if you get an open three, Lawyer looks a little bit more comfortable now shooting the three. But the problem is, if these other guys don't want to shoot, they're, gonna, they're going to pile in on Zach Eady on this possession. The only guy they may guard is Lawyer, but these other guys don't haven't really shown they can make a shot. But you have to go to the big guy. Got to. With Steve Lapis, Jamie Erdahl, our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan. One minute to go in Columbus. Zach Eady better get down low. Lawyer driving, tough shot, no, but a foul is called. That goes on Sean Moore, and that is his fourth. Yeah, that's a foul. I was surprised Zach Eady came all the way out to set that screen, and then he doesn't have enough time to get back under the basket. Lawyer calmly knocks it in. And you don't have to foul. Lawyer has scored the last seven points for the Boilermakers. Gets it done at the line with 55 seconds left. Down three. You get the ball back with 25 seconds to go. Plenty of time. You don't need to foul. Interesting. Z yeah, Edie look at all this. the way up on the ball. The 5'9 Singleton trying to inbound it beyond Edie. He does. You really don't want to foul. But you want to hold the ball if you're FDU. Incredible drama here in Columbus. Shot clock at eight. Singleton to the hoop. Edie with the rejection. Nobody grabbed it out of bounds. And it's FDU ball. Hey, look, there that just that just showed what happened this whole game. FDU went after that ball hard. 
and really produce you to come up with that one. Now they will go to the monitor to confirm that it's FDU basketball. I mean, right here, like with the four white shirts, four around Almanar. I don't disagree with you, but it does look like that FDU may have touched it last. Yes. They still should have come up with it, but yes, yes they might get a break here. On the court, it was called FDU ball, and Gene Steratore telling us from New York that he thinks it should be Purdue basketball. Oh, yeah. And Gene joining us now. What do you think, Gene? I, I, as what you said already earlier, I believe it goes off of FDU and the officials in great position for that. Unfortunately, if you look at this, though, you see 14 White grab an arm there, hit an arm pretty, pretty good that dislodges the ball. Angles are everything, and at that angle, I'm not sure that that official can see that contact on the arm. But as far as out of bounds is concerned, which is all that you can review, it appears to me that it's last touched by blue guys and it's going to be produced basketball. I mean, that's one of the ones I think when the referees do go to the monitor, they look at you. Uh oh boy. Huh. But can't overturn yes, that. They do. Can't Coach. add a foul. I know I'm sure they do, G, but you can't add a foul there. Yeah. No, you're right. And, and let's remember, too, that we're showing a 3.7 on that shot clock right now. So they're going to take some time as it relates to the uh, to the shot clock as well. So after they determine the out of bounds, they got to circle back and then find a, uh, a look with the official clock. We've got a good look at it here when that ball touches out of bounds right there. It appears to be 4.4 seconds on the shot clock as well. So they should have a readjustment on that also. Gene, how difficult is it in a situation like this when there's so much emotion in the building and everyone's going crazy for the refs to remain calm? Well, it's extremely important, and really it happens throughout the duration of the game. One of the things that's very challenging, though, is you go from the, the instantaneous decision-making that you're doing throughout the course of a game, and you immediately walk from that, and now you're over on a monitor looking at things frame by frame, and you now have become a, a replay technician, for lack of a better description. So that's a very difficult situation and believe me as tough as it is for us to sit and watch these types of evaluations that last a long time it feels a hundred times longer for those officials over there so they want to get it done but they need to get it right so it takes some time yeah, I mean they know the whole building is standing on their feet looking at them and that everybody's waiting and we continue to wait. Brian Dorsey, Clarence Armstrong, and Chris Beaver are our officiating crew. And Gene, I think the common thought here, and I know they could be looking at the clock, but I think a lot of people say if it takes this long, then there's not enough evidence to overturn it. Well, that, that, that's always what the interpretation is, Ed. But, but really, you, you are looking, and this is a shot I'm hoping that they're getting. We also assume that they're looking at everything we're looking at, and that's not the case all the time. That's a good they're point. They're looking at different angles and doing things as well. So sometimes when we see this shot that looks so clear in all aspects, we, they're not seeing that right away. So they've got to piece everything together. They've come up with the right decision as it relates to the out of bounds right now, though. They did overturn it. Thank you, Gene. Purdue basketball and exactly 30 seconds on the clock. So the shot clock is turned off. Boilermakers ball down by three. Hey, you got to try and get a quick deuce. If you get a good shot from three, fine. But you got it. Whatever you get, it's got to be going to the basket or to the big guy quickly. And then you call timeout. Smith brings it across. Looking for help, and he finds Gillis, and Matt Painter calls timeout with 18.9 on the clock. Matt Painter was looking for a call as Smith brought the ball up the floor. Yeah, somebody hit the floor. Almanor knocking yeah. Lawyer over, and Matt Painter is hot. Oh, that's he's, he's got a right to be percent right and have it right in front of him. So 
So now one timeout left for the Boilermakers. FDU has two. Gene Sterator telling us a good no call, really. We've seen these types of faces all night long on Purdue. Last year knocked out by St. Peter's. This year another Jersey school has him in trouble. And you know, Purdue just ate up 11 seconds there, 11.3 seconds. And the call timeout. It's like a waste of 11 seconds. You got to start all over now. We played you the clip right off the top of our broadcast, but in the locker room after FDU's win over Texas Southern in the first four on Wednesday, Tobin Anderson said, the more I watch Purdue, the more I think we can beat them. At the time, he told us he regretted it. Maybe he was in the right as his team leads by three. He should have had a little gumption and told us, yeah, I believe it. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said the point of doing is doing it was to tell his team that we need to believe we can win. As they continue to chase history, 19.7 on the clock. It'll be David Jenkins to inbound for Purdue. Lawyer comes to get it. Now Smith. Smith drives. Rejected! Sean Moore again! 12 seconds to go as Roberts is a little slow to get up. Starting to get close to the point where they're going to need to shoot a three. They still could do a two, but better start thinking. Matt Painter does have a timeout if he wants. And now the officials want to see how much time should be on the clock when the ball went out of bounds. Well, it's got a hit. 12-5. All right, quick decision. And wow, how about you? Hey, 12-5. They need a quick one. Last one. Matt Painter will use it. Final timeout for Purdue. When you look at Purdue's three-point shooting, Fletcher Lawyer is three out of seven tonight. The rest of the team is combined two for 18. Yeah, he looks the most comfortable, no doubt about it. And they're at the point now where, truth be told, if they can get a good three, they need to take it. And if they miss, they need to tip it back out like ZD Edie's done a couple of times in this game and take another one. They still, if they can get a quick two, they still can do that and still have a chance to win because they can foul and have plenty of time to come down and score if FDU misses. But right now, they're at that danger point. Game reset shows you what we told you. Purdue is out of timeouts. And I will say this, if somehow the clock ends up going under five, Philly Dickinson should foul. <laughs> if they have it that long. Ethan Morton will inbound for Purdue. Morton having trouble getting it in. Lawyer in the corner. Lawyer puts up a three. No good. Rebound to Roberts, and he's fouled. See, that's what I'm against. Yes, if you get a good three, you got to take it. But you didn't have to, have to. I mean, he shot that like, I got to take a three. You didn't have to take a three. If you, even if you score a two with 7.6 to go, you're down one, you foul. If they miss, even if they make two, you still got a chance to make a three. One and one for Roberts. Makes the first.
Purdue does not have a timeout. They got to go quickly. Down by four. One more for Roberts. Makes them both. Eight seconds left. Smith drives. Blocked from behind with 1.5 on the clock. Knocked out of bounds, point six. Wow. Tobin Anderson's trying to call a timeout. Barely Dickinson calls timeout with point six to go. And they are stunned on the Purdue sideline. Listen, they got outplayed this entire game. I mean, and then as the time went on, a great block here. And as time went on, you could see the pressure. I mean, Mason Gillis, who's been such a good player all year, he had some open threes that they dared him to shoot it, and he refused to shoot it. You could see in the last six, seven minutes that this thing was getting tough on these kids. 1.2 on the clock. Fans on their feet here in Columbus. The lob, and that will do it. FD, you believe it? For just the second time ever, a 16 beats a 1. The smallest team in the country has the biggest heart tonight. And for the third consecutive year, a double-digit seed sends Purdue packing. And Andrew, that's not just a double-digit seed, that's a 16. UMBC and FDU. The only teams to ever do it. Updating the bracket in the East region. Rip up the bracket. Fairly Dickinson, a 16 seed, is moving on to the second round. Jamie Erdahl, if you're able to, take it away. We're going to get a quick dance in. Yeah, they're feeling it. They're feeling it after a win. Let me go find Coach here. He's finding his family right now. Coach, Coach, we're going to go find a camera. Come here. All right. Coach, on Wednesday, we heard you say in the locker room, the more I watch Purdue, the more I think I can beat this, we can beat this team. What did you see on tape? Well, I mean, I just trust our guys. I have faith in our guys. And that speech got overblown, you know. We just have faith in what we do, and our guys are so tough and so competitive, you know. I'll do a better job in this locker room speech than last one. I'll be a little more competitive. It was the right message, maybe the wrong audience. But listen, I love our guys. They're tough. They're gritty. They're, they play, play their tails off. That's an unbelievable win. I mean, we just did something that was, I mean, that's unbelievable. We just shocked the world and, and uh, couldn't happen to a better bunch of guys, a better bunch of fans, my family, the whole thing. So we are <laughs> ecstatic. Unbelievable. We're going to stay in Columbus. I love it. You are a kid from Iowa. Your, your dad was a coach. Yes. You coached at D3, D2, D1. How proud do you think your dad is of you tonight? Oh, man. Don't make me cry. <laughs> I wish he was here. I mean, I wish you could see what's going on here. I mean, most of your life, 
Division three, and Division two, you're in front of 100 people, family and friends. We're in front of 20,000 people here in front of the whole world. Just beat Purdue. I mean, and all my stuff comes from him. My dad was a much better coach than I was, but I've got a better team than he had, so it makes a lot, it makes a lot easier. But no, I wish he was here. Wish my mom was here. But we got a great family and friends, and I'm so proud of this team. And what a wonderful thing this is. I'm just, it's incredible. And our team, I, I couldn't be happy. This place going after you, after you. It's, it's just, it's just awesome. It's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I've lost Sean Moore. I meant I was supposed to have him. <laughs> Unbelievable scene here in Columbus as FDU, a team that won four games a year ago, knocks out a Purdue team that went 29 and 5. Let's go back to Jamie. I'm with the hometown kid from Columbus, Ohio, Sean. What did you just feel when you went to go greet your family? Man, I felt amazing because I didn't really think we was going to be here at, the, at this point of the season, man. It just felt great to get this dub, show people that we could be here. And people didn't think we belonged to be here. We didn't show people that we could do what we could do in this tournament with the big dog. So we're doing great right now. On to the next dub, man. Sean, you had 45 points in the regular season. You had 19 tonight. What came into you? Man, I just, I'm just trying to do whatever I could do to help my team win. So it is, you know, surviving events, man. That's the best thing I could do for my team. It is help my team win. So, yeah. You just beat the number one team ranked in the bracket. When did you know you could do it? Shoot. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to say the Loyola Chicago game, that was a, that's a very big team. You know, they go to the NCAA tournament almost every year for the past couple of years. We played a very tough game that game, even though they got us on the buzzer. But it's all, ever since that game, I knew that we could come where we're at right now. You followed your head coach, Tobin Anderson, to this school. Does that feel like the best decision you've ever made tonight? Oh, yeah, for sure. He believed in me since day one. A lot of, a lot of coach, coaches slept on me in my recruiting, but he was on me. I knew he believed in me. So I followed him. And he, you see where I'm at now. So he believed in his players, and so is me. So, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Jamie, they're dancing in Teaneck, New Jersey. Unbelievable. And how about Zach Eady? One shot in the final 12 minutes of the game. FDU wins. Tournament games continue live now on CBS, TBS, and True TV. Coming up on TNT, Florida Atlantic against Memphis. But first, we'll send you back to our studio for Capital One Tournament Central. It's coming up right after these messages.